name, Satoshi Nakamoto. He fought the world corruption and he said no no. Oh, no. He's not made of metal, he can't corrode. He forced together with open doors covers. Joking bands with politicians till they're blue. If you go short B, you'll get wet too. He's a public ledger, but don't let that fool ya. He's secured by Shaw 256, hallelujah! Church. That's right, I said church. Whoa, well, Metallic, you're really flattering. Busting tyranny at reasonably priced. He's the coolest thing since frozen carbon dioxide. That's dry ice. Kick the central banks. We don't want inflation. He'll choke your b yelling no perspiration. I don't want anybody getting choked, Metallic. He's coming in to save the day in a fabulous, disruptive, decentralized way. Oh, yeah. And no inflation. Oh, no yeah. No inflation. It's Kona, or it isn't it. So sit down, all so you want. Hello? We don't care if you're Gen X, Y, or Z. Come together, one banner, a BTC. So get ready, kids. Join the revolution. Join the revolution. Join the revolution. This ish right here. This ish is the only solution. Okay? It's Bitcoin. Welcome Bitcoin friends, it's Bitcoin Mamo. Today we're going to talk about the Pi Cycle Top Indicator that I modified and we're going to look at where we are in this current cycle and we're going to compare it to the previous 2016-2017 bull run cycle. We'll also compare these two cycles using the logarithmic Fibonacci extension tool and we'll also do some projections showing when the Pi Cycle might cross and give us a peak in the market if that sounds interesting, stay tuned. I really think this video will clarify where we are in this bull cycle and how far away we are from a bull market top. So I've just got that indicator pulled up now and I'm just using the settings shown here. There are the other solutions which lie within these bands. So I'm just using the outer limits of the seven solutions. And we can see we had this pullback from 64K down to 47 and we did come into these moving averages here got support on the bottom and bounce had a pullback to the top of this moving average twice here and it's currently acting as support and just looking back on the previous bull market we did see something quite similar so we can see we had uh, two pullbacks here where we did come back to these bottom moving averages and we bounced used it as support and went higher and the second pullback here, we also came to the bottom. A very similar pullback to the previous one. And we got above it, tested uh, the top moving averages here a couple of times. And then we took off on the next move. And after that, we had another pullback. But we never came back to these moving averages. And we completed the bull cycle here when these lines did cross. 
and just looking at the 2013 bull run here we had this first top and once we got above these lines we never actually pulled back to test them again and we went to this top and then we had another top in the same year and during this pullback here this was a quite a large pullback we did go below but on the second pullback we can see that we came back to this lower line acted as support and then we tested these upper lines again and then we completed the bull market and if we go back all the way to the start of this chart this does start in 2010 and we can see there was a top here we can see that this pullback here we, we also came back to these moving averages it's not showing both of the moving averages because there isn't enough data to start generating these moving average lines on the lower band so what I want to do now is just put both of these cycles side by side here and just compare these two pullbacks and I've just got this uh, time measurement drawn here it's 115 days and this is the 2016-2017 bull run and I've just started this measurement at once we broke these top moving averages for the first time and I've just got an ending at this second pullback where we came back to the lower bands and I've just drawn it on the current cycle here 2021 so we did break the top of these moving averages at the start of the year and if we measure a similar amount 115 days on this one we can see that it comes to the pullback also where we did come to these lower moving averages so we do have a similar fractal there and we can also see here once we got support on these lower ones we had this big run up here and we did a very similar thing so these bull markets do look quite similar the only difference here is we had a bigger pullback here on this first drop and we did come to the lower bands before going high and doing it a second time and on this current bull run we didn't quite get that big pullback to the lower bands we went higher earlier and then we've been going sideways and then we had that second pullback but overall it's a similar time amount that we spent going from the breakout of these moving averages to the most recent pullback to these lower moving averages I'll just tell you what those moving averages are anyway in case you're wondering so the upper yellow line here is the 581 day moving average multiplied by 2.89 the lower yellow line is the 119 day moving average the upper red line is the 569 day moving average multiplied by 2.77 and the lower red line is the 126 day moving average so what I've done now here is from this previous cycle once we did get this second pullback and came to this current support line that's where we are currently in the chart what I've done is I've copied the rest of this bull run here and just pasted it onto the current chart here that I've drawn just to see where it might take us if we did a similar thing and we can see we would run up here and we would get to around 311,000 mark personally I think we'll probably get around the 280,000 but I'll go over that in another part in this video and if we measured the time here from the pullback to the peak and applied it here to this fractal this would actually put the peak around 28th of July which personally I was thinking around September we will peak but we'll just have to watch it as it plays along of course this is a fractal we don't need to do the same thing and we'll be looking to see when these lines cross as a indicator of a pi cycle top and possible bull market peak and this is just to compare the two looking at it from pretty close to the bottom of the bear cycle and just looking at how similar they are of course this this cycle was quite different we had this early run-up and then we did have that stock market crash causing Bitcoin to crash also so this is something I talked about in a previous video also where I was projecting what price we might peak out at and this is on the logarithmic time scale here and also this is the Fib extension taking it from the previous bull market cycle top to the bottom of the bear market and using these Fib extensions but these are on the logarithmic fib extensions also so just if you tick this box here fib levels based on log scale it will look the same as how I've got it here so this is the previous cycle here we can see from end of 2013 to end of 2017 
this is the current cycle we can see that we did both times come up to this 786 level and get a pullback this one was obviously much more dramatic with that crash and we can see we had some trouble here breaking the all-time high this one wasn't as prolonged but we did have some pullback there and then we ran up to this 1.272 fib level and we did break it but then we did have a pullback back to that yellow line and we did a similar thing here in this current cycle we did go above and then pull back to the line and currently we are at this 1.618 level that's giving us all this trouble and that is at 63,000 approximately and we can see that we are currently having trouble here at this level we can see on the previous cycle we did we did go above it but then we did have a big pullback at that same point also so looking at it once we break this 1.618 fib level we might come up here we might experience a bit of a pullback somewhere along the line here before getting to this two level which is at 126,000 and previous time we did go straight through it during the end of the bull market cycle we did come all the way up to this 2.4 level and if we were to do that again that would be around 272,000 so it will be interesting to see if we do do a similar thing but these are the levels I'm going to be looking out for and I will cash out some earlier on the way up you don't want to if you're wrong not have cashed some out but I'll be looking to cash a large amount out at these levels here also if we look at where we did pull back here during the 2018 bear market we also came back to this 1.618 level here at approximately 4,000 we did go slightly below so if we were to do a similar thing after this peak perhaps we will come down to around this $60,000 level so let's just try some projections look at what date the pi cycle top indicator might indicate the top so I have put in the price data again it's updated to the current day and currently these lines are about four thousand dollars apart so if we were to just go up a thousand dollars a day from here and we did look at this column here this is the difference between the two moving averages and obviously when it gets to zero then we get the pi cycle top so we can see they would start expanding and then start contracting here and expanding and they would actually get to $5,800 value apart and then they would start contracting and getting closer together until we got across here which would be around September 21st and Bitcoin at that moment would be at a price of 194000 and again it's hard to do these projections because the price action isn't going to just go up $1,000 a day it's going to zigzag and this will cause a big difference as to when this actually goes to zero and we do see that cross so all we can do is is play around with some numbers and just keep filling it in as as we get closer to the date we'll have a better understanding as to when it might cross and if we were to go up seven hundred dollars a day now we're just adding seven hundred to each one of these and we can see that these lines would start expanding we'd get to five six thousand seven thousand and they would fluctuate a bit we can see it came back down to the eight thousands back to nine ten eleven and then they'd really start expanding and we wouldn't see a cross and finally just looking at what number if we went up every day by that amount would we only just get a cross we would see that 986.5 dollars a day would just give us that cross where we do go below zero here and actually if we did 986 we wouldn't get that cross and doing it this way it would be around October 2nd 2021 at a price of 203,000 but again these are just projections and it's not going to be accurate until we know that price data how can we make a more accurate projection well what if we took the price data here from the point that we're currently at in in the current cycle compared to the previous cycle and took the number data from here to the peak but adjusted it so that it would match the same starting point so from this point we were at around 4,000 only we're at 58,000 so we need to multiply this number by a certain number 
to get it to this 58,000 level. And then we'd also multiply that same number by each of the price data on each day leading to the top, acting as a bit of a ratio multiplier. So what we would do is we would take the previous day's price here, 56,484, and divide it by the value of our price point from the previous cycle that we're projecting from. And that would give us the multiplier to use to have the same starting price with the projection. And we can see we need to multiply it by 13.45. So we do that and we can see it takes us to that 56,480. And we do that for the rest of the projection. So applying that to all the data here. And we can see looking at this pi cycle top as these get closer together also. And we can see that still at 5,000, 6,000. We can see it would get down to 2,000 here, 2,500, the difference between the moving averages, but they still wouldn't have crossed and would be sitting at a price of 261,300. So that's applying the previous cycle data all the way to the peak in the end of 2017, using a multiplier to correct it to the current price as the starting point. And we can see that we wouldn't get a cross. We would start getting close. So perhaps the peak might go a bit higher than this value and it would go for a little bit longer. So if we were to plot that out on the chart, we would see that currently we are where we pulled back to this red line. And this is around May 5th and applying that previous bull cycle data to the current cycle and looking at the pie cycle lines here in red and yellow. We can see the parabolic move we might be having coming into the end of this bull cycle. And we can see how these lines would take a while to cross and they would get awfully close using that data. But we only had the data to the peak of the previous cycle. And we can see this would probably cross a week later as this parabolic trend peaked out. And again that took us to a price of around 260000 so this is probably the best we can do with projecting the data, just using the previous cycle data. And we can just see how these pi cycle lines would react here. We'd probably get one more decent pullback here. And just projecting it, we could see actually it would take us to 100,000, pretty much spot on. We would have a pullback to 80,000. And then we would carry on on the rest of this parabolic advance till we peaked out. And this one's got it going till July 26, but of course these lines didn't cross yet. Perhaps in August sometime, but personally I do believe around September. Again, we're not going to mimic the previous cycle exactly. So thanks for watching. Hope that was informative. Gives us a better idea of where we might be in this bull cycle. And the fact that we haven't really fully started this parabolic end to the bull market cycle. So I think there's good things to come for Bitcoin. So thanks for watching. I'm Bitcoin Mamo. See you on the next video. Bye.